Hello, I'm Jean Kelly. I assisted Tony Dold, the curator of the Selmarsh on Land Herbarium, in editing this book, Bushman, Botany and Baking Bread, the, the subtitle, Mary Pocock's Record of a Journey Across Angola with Dorothea Blake in 1925. Mary Pocock was a well-known botanist um, and ended her life living in Grahamstown at 18 Milner Road and working in the botany department as a research fellow. She went on this trip with Dorothea Blake, who was anxious to discover and interact with the remnants of the Bushman people who she had been told were living in central Angola. Mary Pocock's interest was in the botany that, and collecting plants during their trip. Many of the plants she collected were at that time new to science. Um, it was nearly a hundred years ago. At that time, Angola was a pristine, unexp basically unexplored territory. And so th the record from that time is, makes a very fascinating reading. They, the two women traveled from Cape Town to um, the Victoria Falls by train from the Victoria Falls, um, they travelled up the Zambezi to near Mongu by riverboat. That trip took them 18 days. And from there they travelled across what was then northern Rhodesia to the Angola border. And once in Angola, they spent a month camping at Kutsi. They, they moved then to Kunzumbia and moved right across to the west to Quele. From Quele, they went to Kayongo, which was um, a, a very large Bushman encampment, where, in fact, they had their most rewarding interactions with the Bushmen. They then travelled north to BA, where there is a railway line, and caught a train, and off my map, you get to Benguela and Lobito Bay, and from there they travelled back to Cape Town by train. The whole trip took them six months. They were assisted on their tra trip by relays of porters. They had a lot of luggage with them, of course. And um, when they camped for any length of time, they retained the services of a few local people who helped them um, with the domestic side of running the camp. It was a pretty rough journey, but they surmounted it with great panache. What the record consists of, most important, are the five diaries, Mary Pocock called them diaries, which she wrote in the course of the journey. These, these diaries, which were recorded recorded in random notebooks, as you can see, um, are still in existence, and they were what we used to put together the account of contained in the book. They, what really pleases me is that the first few of these, number one, two, and three at least, were posted back from the wilds of Angola to Cape Town. The, she wrote them as a running commentary on their trip to entertain her family. And she did in, illustrate them with some quirky little sketches. She, she included some quirky little field sketches to give her 
family an idea of what she was doing and what they saw on the way. Yes. And they are in, included in the book. Here is the camera that she used, um, a very um, handsome piece of equipment. And these are some of the glass slide, the glass plate slides which she produced. So all the pictures were in black and white, but um, they were remarkably beautiful and clear pictures. Um, some of them she coloured, hand coloured. There was no colour photography at the time. Um, that pigment hasn't remained stable, but at least it gives one a bit of an idea of what a, the actual scene would have been. And her most remarkable uh, photos are some of these wonderful shots of the Bushmen that they met. In this instance, the Bushmen were preparing to have, hold a dance, which they did, and um, Dorothea and Mary were there to enjoy the festivities. So they recorded Bushmen in an un, who were living in an unselfconscious and um, natural way in their normal communities. Dorothea Blake said within 50 years she feared that that way of life would have vanished and Mary Pocock echoed those sentiments and I think they probably have proved to be um, correct in their prediction when you think of you know, what has happened in the intervening 95 years in Angola. Um, th Here are some of the portraits that she painted of Bushmen that they encountered. I think she captures character and personality very well in those. But she also photographed them, so we know what they look like from the photographs. Um, and that, oh, oh that, here is Mary Pocock, a photograph from sometime in that period in her life. We don't have an exact date. And there is Dorothea Blake, who was the leader of the expedition. And she was the one who was an expert on Bushman languages and this was the main reason for the expedition.